CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. So commonly when you have a POE camera, uh, you use it as a part of a system where you've got cameras, cable, and an NVR. So the cable, Ethernet cable from the camera plugs into one of the POE ports. So you can have, in this case, this is a four POE port NVR. You can have four cameras connected here, and the recorder stores the footage inside on a hard drive. Now, let's say you don't want a recorder because you don't need continued video storage. So you just want to have a camera as a webcam mounted around your property. So you can use a POE camera independently. In this case, the Avali series of Avalonix POE cameras can allow a, a snapshot based recording. Uh, we offer the Ava I cameras as both bullets, turret domes, PTZ cameras, fixed lens cameras, motorized zoom lens cameras, many different types. So what I'm going to be showing you a tutorial where I take one of these turret dome cameras, put a micro SD card inside and connect it to my network. Now, instead of using this NVR here, I'm going to get rid of this NVR and the other camera. So now all we have is a camera and a cable. This is a POE camera. That means you can actually send POE power and data to the camera. To do that, you need a POE injector, which I got here. So the yellow cable from the camera is for POE power and data, plugs into the POE power and data port on the POE injector. And then the data port on the POE injector connects to your local network with a router and goes straight from here to that router or network switch. And then you've got a power cord coming to the POE injector to plug into power. So this thing can juice up your camera, get data from it, and send it back to your network. The setup is pretty simple. All you need to do is just run a wire directly from the camera, connect it to the POE injector right here, and connect this end to your router, and connect this to power. And that's pretty much it. The camera will come on your network. You have to set some network settings on the camera to make sure you can see it on your network, which I'm going to be showing you in the next part, where I already have the camera configured to a local IP address, you need to have some sort of networking knowledge to be able to accomplish what I show you. Now, one word on how to get a micro SD installed in a camera. We usually like to sell the cameras with a micro SD inside so you don't have to go through this process. But if you're unfamiliar, the camera's turret shell pops out like this. And then you have to drop the camera out. And depending on the model of your camera, you'll find a compartment in there where you can actually unscrew this and put a micro SD card inside. But I already have a micro SD slot inside this camera. Let me show you how to configure everything together to get email based snapshots. Once you've inserted the micro SD card successfully into your ABA I POE camera, you want to go into the camera's web interface. On my camera, I already know what the IP address is because I set it to be the same network scheme as my local network. So I'm just going to type in the IP address into a web browser. I'm using Windows Edge. I'm in Windows. And I'm going to type in my username and password. If you purchase one or several IP cameras without an NVR, you'll find a label on top of each camera's box with uh, information containing the IP address and the username and password. If we weren't able to obtain a specific IP address to set, we may have also put the camera on DHCP. That means it's automatically going to get an IP address from your local network. For that, you can use our AvaI config tool to find the camera on your network. And all you do is hit search, and on a Windows computer without any restrictions from your network, it'll be able to find the camera, and then you can actually just click on it. So in this case, I'm using this camera. It's on my local network scheme. All I had to do was hit remote web, and it pulled up in a web page. I could have also manually entered it like I did here. So once you get access to your web interface, uh, depending on your networking, skills type in the username and password that's stated on the camera box once you enter the camera if you haven't used the camera before the first thing you want to do is before you set up any settings go to setup here on the top and go under system and then click on time so once you're in this time menu you want to set up the proper time you could just click on sync with computer time and it will sync with your local clock right here. But let's say you're turning on and off the camera or you're just not using it as frequently. It's better to just let the camera get time from an online server such as time.windows.com. 
com. You can type that in and hit save. After you see the success message, hit test to ensure that the NTP protocol is working. Now, this will automatically sync time, but you need to make sure you select this setting sync with NTP server if you want to be able to sync time with that NTP server like I just showed you how to enter it. And then select your time zone and hit save. The second thing when working with time servers is make sure you also configure settings for DST if your locality uh, does use DST. So I'm on the East Coast. So right now it is showing me the correct time as my computer. I want to set DST so my camera never falls behind. The correct DST settings would be first hit on and then configure them as such. So it's start time is March second week Sunday at 2 a.m. and then November first week Sunday at 2 a.m. You can use these drop boxes drop down boxes to select the correct times and then the DST bias is 60 minutes so basically it will pull the time uh, and have a bias of 60 minutes. Hit save make sure it says success after you do that. In my case, I already had it enabled, so I'll show you. I'm going to turn it off. It says set successfully. I'm going to turn it back on. It says set successfully. Now my time is synced in both of these entries, so my camera will always have the correct time. If you don't do this, then your snapshots will always have a wrong timestamp on them and your video as well. Now, as you can see, I can watch the video on my browser. I don't have any plugins installed. That's why I'm getting this message. You can ignore this if you don't want to install a plugin, and I'm not going to install the plugin in my video here. I can switch between a substream and a mainstream. Substream is a lower resolution stream. Mainstream is the full resolution stream of the camera. Without a plugin, you can only see up to 1080p here in the web interface. Keep that in mind. With a plugin, you can see the full resolution your camera has to offer. The second thing is, you know, you install this micro SD card that we discussed. You want to go in here and make sure it's appearing here and you see a total capacity and storage medium status of normal. I've been recording for some time on this micro SD. I don't want to format mine, but if you put in a fresh micro SD slot, you'll probably see something other than normal. Make sure you enable it and then hit format and then hit save. Once you do that, it'll refresh and give you a total capacity time and then it'll give you an idea of how much video you can allot for um, videos and snapshots. You can change this if you wanted to, but this is the default the camera is giving me. And then here under storage policy, I'm going to do basically alarm recording only because I only want to record based on event detection so my micro SD slot doesn't get filled up. I don't want any schedule and alarm recording. And when storage is full, I want it to overwrite and then this is a setting for in seconds and for video recording onto a micro SD. I'm not recording video in this tutorial. I'm just doing snapshots. I'll just leave it alone and hit save. So in your case, just hit save and you'll get a success message. Now, the third thing is let's go under video and audio. Under video, these are the default settings for a 2K camera. I'm going to stick with these. If you're using a 2K camera, you can use these as well. If you wanted to, for some reason, lower the resolution of your camera, you can using this capture mode. And whatever resolution you select here for the mainstream, it will end up changing the snapshot resolution as well. I'm going to keep them as default. Go to snapshot. Now, if you want to do these email alerts with a snapshot, this is the fourth thing you need to do. Make sure you enable snapshots by hitting the on dial here. And it defaults to the mainstream resolution that I just showed you in the previous menu. And the max size in kilobytes. And the snapshot interval. I'm going to do an interval of one second, a number of snapshots as such. And you can set a schedule. Do not use repeat because what it'll do is it'll keep saving snapshots at intervals continuously. You don't want that. You just want to leave it a schedule and leave the schedule blank and hit save. So this will allow you to use this setting along with email based notifications to attach a snapshot only when there is some sort of event detected. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure a video based motion detection and then enable the snapshot. Now, the next thing after this, it is the fifth thing you need to configure is the email that you need to put in. So go to network, go to email. 
under the email option, you need to configure the email settings for your email server. In this guide, I'll be showing you how to put in the configuration settings for a Gmail address. If you're watching this video on cctvcameraworld.com through the blog post, you can find the video in our blog on how to enable two-factor authentication and then a app password for Gmail based email addresses. And then after you've done that, you can use that email address and that app password to send emails from your camera. You can do the same thing for an NVR as well. However, if you're watching the video on YouTube, please make sure you visit the blog that's linked below in the description for more information on how to, to enable Gmail based email addresses to be used with your AVAI POE camera. Process is pretty simple. Once you have a app password, you just got to enter the right credentials and I'll show you that. And on the blog, we also have information on how to enter the correct Outlook settings for your Outlook based email address for it to be used here. So here the name, I'm going to give my email a name as such as Gmail. That's all. Or camera, just write something, give it a name. Please don't use any special characters and no spaces either. Now in the address, you would put in your email address. So this is my email address. And then for the SMTP server, type in smtp.gmail.com. This is the email server to send emails with Gmail. If you're using a Gmail, you're going to make sure this is the same for you. So address will be different based on your Gmail address. And the name will also be different based on whatever you want to call who the email is coming from. SMTP port has to be 587. Hit this to enable SSL based email sending. Otherwise, Gmail will not accept your emails from this device. Snapshot interval and hit attach image need to be checked. And you can put a snapshot interval of how often you want snapshots taken when the motion is detected. There's a drop down here. It lets you select. I'm going to do two seconds because I want quick snapshots. Server authentication. This is where you actually type in your full email address and your password. I have my password in my clipboard, so I just pasted it. And then I'm going to basically type my email address in. Now, who you send the email to, you got to name that. And then next, put in the email address you want to send that email to. I'm sending it to myself. If you try to send emails with snapshot alerts to multiple receivers, what might happen is that Gmail might consider your emails a spam because you're sending too many emails with too many snapshots and this email functionality will break. It's always just easier to send from the same email to receive to the same email and then hit save. Now you can hit test to send a test email. And what this will do is tell you if the camera was able to connect to the email address you entered here with the credentials and it was successfully able to send out a test email. Now you have to log into your Gmail. Uh, in this case, I have to log into my Gmail account. You would have to as well to make sure you receive that test email. I'm logging into my Gmail account here and I receive this camera test email right there. There's no screenshot on purpose. It says if there was a picture, it's just a black dot. And if I click on it, it is a black dot here. It's hard for you to see, but it's there in the picture right there. So I know my snapshots are working and I also know my email text alert is working as well. So once this is all set and you've got a test email coming into you, let's do the final step, which is configuring the event detection, in my case, motion detection. So this is the sixth step to navigate to configuring motion detection. You have to go under event. Now, if you've never configured a motion detection rule before on the camera, you'll see a grid. While this is good to configure, I like using a different method that's available here. It gives me a more precise measurement of detecting motion based on what the camera is seeing. So I've got my camera pointing to the front of our parking lot and there are a lot of cars passing by, etc. So I'm going to improvise and set up a rule. Now you will see this message here because if you don't have a plugin installed, it's prompting you to install a plugin. You necessarily don't need it. 
I'm just going to ignore it and I'm going to double click to hide it. Change the room mode to area. It gives you the ability to create a detection rule. I'm going to hit add here and I'm going to move this rectangle and I can move it to a certain spot and expand it to look at a certain area where when things change it'll detect motion. Now, I've got a lot of leaves kind of rustling in the wind. This will cause motion detection. If you see there's no cars passing by, you see these red lines, they're telling me they're getting triggered for motion. So you can increase the object size to reduce the false positives that are happening. So I'm going to wait for a car to go by and that will hopefully trigger this rule beyond this threshold line I've put in. So there's a motorcycle that went by and then there's this bigger truck that went by, but it's still here. So what I can do is lower the threshold. So it's just at the tip of these motion events. And you can increase the sensitivity to high or low, and you can play with that for your camera's view. And in my case, it's just right. I'm going to hit save. The alarm parameter suppress alarm, what that means is after the first motion detection, it'll suppress detecting further motion events for 15 seconds so you don't constantly get motion alerts. Now, once I've done this, I'm going to go under motion detection and make sure it's on and hit save. And it says no change has been made because I already saved my settings. I'm going to exit this menu and then come back to it to make sure my settings are still intact, and they are. Go to Trigger Actions. Make sure you click Send Email if you want that motion alert to go to your email. Hit Save. And then under Plan, make sure everything is enabled. By default, it is. This is checked, and this is all blue. Hit Save. So if for some reason your plan was not all blue, you can control these buttons or you can use these buttons to control what areas are highlighted. Right now, if everything is unarmed, and if I click on armed and I draw across it, I can arm it. There is this ultra motion detection, which is for detecting human and vehicle uh, forms, and you could certainly use that as well. The camera uses its own algorithm to detect a human or motor vehicle and you don't have fine-tuned control over it, over it besides for sensitivity. I'd rather just use the basic in this case that I just showed you. Hit save. Go to trigger actions. Again, make sure your settings are there. So once you've accomplished all these steps, your camera should be already sending email alerts. So I'm going to log into my email. And I see here I've got motion detection titled emails here with snapshots. So I'm going to click on that and take a look. So as this vehicle was passing by, that's how I tuned my motion detection for spikes based on new vehicles entering the road in front. It'll try to do its best job to capture the image. Here's another one. It just came in while I was looking at the other picture. So you want to play with your motion detection settings to ensure that they're picking up the kind of objects you're trying to detect. So in my case, I'm just looking at vehicles. You could do this for humans. So here there was a car that spiked. So what it's doing is basically looking for changes in the block that I drew, which was like around here. And when a new car goes by of a certain size, it changes the pixels here and the camera senses that and based on my settings detects it as an event alert and then sends me a snapshot of the moment when that happened as close as possible. Now it's very important to see here there's a person walking so it sent me an image of that. Now these are high resolution images. So there was a vehicle here. So now let me show you like for example this image it is a full resolution image if I wanted to zoom in. I certainly can. The slot is about 100 feet across. I can see the person's description here. Of course, if they were closer, you could pick up their face. If they were about 40 feet away, that's what 2K resolution cameras can do. 
now that you have email motion alerts appearing in your inbox, I'm just going to let my camera run while I'm speaking here. I um, should be receiving new emails. Keep in mind, Gmail provides you about 15 gigs of storage space. That's free. So you're sending an email from this. So if I go to the sent folder, it's going to keep a copy there. And then there's also another copy in the inbox. Make sure you keep track of how much utilization is happening on your Gmail account. You may need to go back and delete older emails to free up space so that you can receive new emails. That's one. And two, when you go back to your camera and you go to storage, that your micro SD is healthy and it's not filling up. This setting should make it overwrite automatically without you needing to maintain it. Micro SD cards do have a certain lifetime. Keep in mind, depending on the kind of card you're using, if you didn't get it from us, that lifetime varies. Keep a check on that. If you wanted to fine tune your motion detection settings, you can certainly go back to this screen here and fine tune them according to your preferences. Now, if you wanted to fine tune your motion event settings, you can certainly go back into the motion event setting here and delete this rule and redraw it according to however you want it to be. So hit plus and then you can move this box and set it to only the area that works for you. I just redrew another one and then keep an eye on this. You don't want to get too many spikes happening because then you'll get too many emails and it'll just use up your Gmail account very quickly. And you'll be getting also nonsense emails that you don't need. We always suggest you put cameras up on a vantage point where you know you're going to be able to capture this motion event that you're really trying to monitor and get alerts for so you can reduce the number of false positives and uh, not be bothered by email alerts when you don't need them. Hopefully you found this video useful. Please make sure to check out the guide on CCTV Camera World. And if you did like this video and found it useful, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.